Greetings and welcome to another video by Stacking You. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the command window. This is where you do everything in a command. In the command window, you put in all the actions you want to happen when you execute the command. There's lots in here. At the top, you've got four options. When I say, when I press keys, when I press button, and when I press the mouse, these all do the same thing. They execute the command. So in this here, that's the phrase, new command. So if I said new command, it would execute it. I can enable key presses. I just press a key on the keyboard. You have the modifier keys. You've got the other options here, a fairly self-explanatory. That one there though, does not allow the key to be passed through. When you press a key, voice tech doesn't allow it to be passed through to any other applications, which can be handy in some situations. Any keys that you're holding down to run the command will need to be released before it will execute. Shortcut is invoked when pressed twice, aka double tap in the key. And you've also got the other option there, invoke on a single key press. This lets you press the key and execute the command as long as the double tap time threshold has been exceeded. However, you must use the command double tap invoked if you want to find out whether it's a double tap or a single tap. Check the menu for more details. It told you it was advanced. Shortcut is invoked when long press, so if you hold it down for 700 milliseconds, which is the default in the main voice stack options, this lets you check if the key was a long press or a short press, but you need to use a token, command long press invoked, to check for it. Repeat command while keys are held down, so it just keeps on repeating it while you hold the key down. Use a variable. This could be quite handy at times. If you had a variable called elite UI up, you could set that variable somewhere else to be, say, W. This lets you set the key press elsewhere. So if you need to change it for some reason, you don't have to keep going back into the command. You just change it in the variable. Press button, basically the same thing. Rather than pressing a key, you press a button. You've got the same options on there. Same with when I press a mouse. You've got all the various mouse options on there. And you have the same options as previously. So this window here shows any actions you add into the command. So you've got key press, very simple. Again, you've got the modifiers and if you press any key. Clicking this option here gives you a drop down list of all the keys available on your keyboard. They can make it very specific. Number pad nine, okay. And it puts number pad nine in there, or we can clear it and just press nine on the numeric keypad. Then you've got how long to hold the keys down for and release it. This is the default option. That is going to hold it down for three hundredths of a second. And then you've got this one here, press key. So this will just press the key and keep it held down until it's told to release the key. Q here. And that says press down Q. And it will sit there holding the key down until the cows come home or it's told to release it. That obviously won't do very much, you just do, do, do press Q, but you get the idea. The other option is toggle the key, so if it's held down, it'll be released, and vice versa. Then you have the variable option, which allows you to set the key press elsewhere, which saves you having to come back and edit every single command, should you need to change them. That gets very handy later on when you have very complicated commands. So now we've got the mouse. You've got two options, so you've got move, you can now move the mouse around the screen. You can manually set the coordinates if you want to. And you've got an option here for text or token based coordinates. You can pull those from another command. So they can be sent to this command. Green coordinates, that's actual absolute screen and then the application coordinates, which like, it could be slightly different depending on the, the resolution it's running in. You can also set it to the corners of the screen. The top left, top right, etc. Move to a specific location. We've got all the options there. Lots of things you can play with. Save the current location. We call mouse to save location. And this lets you adjust the mouse cursor location. Another one in here is click. Anything you can do with the mouse, you can do in here pretty much. If you've got one of those multi button mice with more than three buttons, they won't be in here. There we go. Look, you've got click left button, right button, middle button, etc. 
it's all should be fairly self-explanatory. You know, even down here, but move the scroll wheel forward or backwards or left or right. So plenty of things you can mess around with. Pause. This lets you add pauses into your command. So that's just a standard pause. That's the default time you can modify if you need to. And you've got add a pause for a default amount of time, which you set in the main options. You can add a specific pause. These are again just defaults. We can have variable pause. So in here, you could put in a decimal variable name. And then you can change that variable elsewhere, either in this command or from another command, which can be very, very useful if you want to do dynamic pauses. You should just change it on the fly. Other, there's loads of options in here, loads of different options. I won't go through them all here directly, but I'll just give you a quick look. We've got voice hack actions. So this is just something that voice hack does itself. Execute another command, stop a command, process all commands, and so on. You see here, the titles are fairly obvious as to what they do. Start listening, stop listening, get the idea. There's lots of things in there you can play with. We can go through these at a later date in a bit more detail. Sounds. Again, this is fairly self-explanatory. Say something with your text-to-speech. Stop a text-to-speech from playing. Play a single sound. Play a random sound. Stop audio, and you've got captured audio. Windows is for Windows commands. So you've got run application, stop a process, get a text value to the Windows clipboard, more Windows function, more so on and so forth. Dictation. This is where you voice that lets you dictate something into the speech engine, which you can then use in that like text to speech response or you have to trigger a command. It's not necessarily 100% perfect. It does depend on how much you've done the speech training, but it's there if you need it. So you've got advanced where there's lots of stuff here. This is where you set variables. You have the small integer. That's just really a holdover as a legacy. Don't use this anymore. Use a normal integer instead. Then you've got decimals, a text value, a boolean, as it says there, true or false, date and time. The converter value from one variable type to another. Get the input from a user. There's various ways you could do it. Wait for a response, wait for text, or an integer or a decimal. Here's save values from the profile. That will just wipe anything you've got in there and reset them all back to their default state, which is not set. Write text to a file. This is where you can do conditions. So if this equals that, do that. You can add additional statements to that. If this equals this, do that. Else, if this equals that, do this, and so on. And else is just if this or else that. End of condition block, got loops, loop ends, loop breaks, continues, add a jump marker, add a jump command, execute an external plugin, execute an inline function so you can run code like C or VB within voice stack directly, write a value to the event log and add a comment to the action list. So yeah, all these will go through in more detail as we make commands up. Recorder, this lets you record key presses, mouse clicks and the mouse position. But again, this is like, if you want to stop record a series of key presses, you can start the recording and then just go, the way it records all the keys and how long it takes you to press them how long the pauses are between key presses, etc. If you're having a problem building a command, you can do it here manually and then you can tweak it afterwards. And here you've got some options you can use to tweak the command. Description, that's just a description of the command. A category, this lets you group commands into, well, categories. You can have one for, say, maybe ship commands or foot commands or vehicle commands and so on. It just keeps things nice and tidy. Send command to this target. So the target is the active window by default. You can change it there and you can select different applications, but that would temporarily make it the active window. So you've got to be careful with that one. Recognition. This is how voice attack handles, or the speech engine handles what you're saying with voice attack. Normal, when you're talking and voice attack listening, 
you need to leave a slight pause before you give a command. So you could be saying da 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 fire missiles. If there's not enough of a gap between when you finish talking and you give the command, it won't recognise that you've given a command. But this lets you modify that somewhat. So if you've got a continuous speech there, this option will attempt to execute the command as part of continuous speech. So while you're talking, it's still listening for a command, but it's not waiting for you to finish talking. So you could be saying, the weather's nice today, fire missiles whilst I was walking in the park. And because it's heard fire missiles, and it knows that's a command, it will trigger it. But then it gives you the problem that sometimes the voice tag may mishear what you're saying and trigger a command that you didn't want to happen because it heard something that matched a voice trigger. The restricted continuous speech works like the continuous speech, but for the phrase to be recognised, it must be at the beginning of the event rather than anywhere in the speech event. We could say, fire missiles while I was walking in the park, and that would trigger it. You may want to mess around with it. Personally, I'll just leave it as normal, but it's there if you need it, and you might find it useful in some situations. Full command. So, there's a couple of things you can do with this. This is just as it says there, it's a full command. But you can split it between a prefix and a suffix. What this lets you do is you can have the prefix command run actions before the suffix commands run. So you can say the prefix and nothing will happen. You can say the suffix and nothing will happen. You have to say them both together. So this can be useful if you want to create lots of similar commands, but you don't want to copy and modify over and over and over again. The voice tag manual gives an example of how you can use this. If you want to find out more about it, it might be worth a read. Allow other commands to execute while she's running. That's it to default. If you want other commands to wait till she's finished, untick it. There might be something you need this command to do that other commands depend upon. Always execute this command, will always run it regardless of any other settings in voice attack. Stop the command if the target window focus is lost. Can be useful. It stops any commands running if the target changes to another window or application. And then resume the command if the focus is regained. Minimal cover this level, this just overwrites the default that you set in the main voice attack options. And then repeat. So you've got the once. Continuously until you stop it, or a selected number of times, and you can set the number there. Advanced, I don't know if you'll ever use them. That has to do with how many resources voice attack assigns this command. So if you want something to run really quickly, you can just give it more resources. I wouldn't mess with it, honestly. Do not execute command if it's already running. There might be times when you only want the command to run once. And then this one, this enables proxy command events. So this is when you want the command to fire command events within a plugin or inline function. This is unsupported and experimental. And then over here, you've got up and down. So if you had, let's just put a couple of commands in quick. It lets you move commands up and down in the list. You can edit an action. And then you can delete it. And these are the undo and redo buttons. If we delete that one, we can undo it and redo it. In here, if you right click, you've got loads of options in there as well. So you can cut, copy, paste, duplicate, edit, delete, select all, select none, move them up and down, disable the action, add a key press, add a mouse action, add a pause, other, which is just a repeat of the options on the left hand side. Copy selected as text, which lets you copy this out and paste it into something like Notepad. And you can also just double click it to edit it as well. And that's the edit the command window. 
if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, click the like button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe too and share the video out. Until the next one, take care and I'll see you soon. Toodles.